Hey guys, it's Eric, owner of Far Point Farms here in the mountains of North Carolina. Tonight, I wanted to take a moment to talk to you about some recent happenings in the ham industry. The ham bans uh, may be under a bit of a threat right now, and I'm going to tell you why I'm okay with that. Yeah, I know, kind of scary for <laughs> to hear that, but here's why, and I'll play it out as we go. So recently, about two weeks ago, the FCC had some uh, hearings, and it looks like perhaps the two-meter ban, which is one of the more popular bands uh, in ham radio, is going to be pulled out from underneath us. And uh, I expect that that will probably happen in uh, 12 to 18 months. So I find it to be terribly unfortunate because I own a bunch of ham radio gear, and most of that ham radio gear is actually in the two-meter band. So that's kind of a bummer. But anyway... Here's what I think has to happen. If, if we're going to evolve as a community, if we're going to continue to uh, operate, and uh, it's not so much going to be about fighting to hold on to 2 meter or fighting to hold on to 10 meter or 12 or 6 or 40 or whatever. Whatever your band is, whatever the one is that you just hold so dear, I think if you are just aiming to keep that, uh, in its entirety, you're, you're going to lose, and so are the rest of us. I think that what we are facing is such a decline in the popularity of ham radio and CB radio and all forms of two-way communication of that nature that uh, if we try to hold on to these large chunks, or sometimes not so large chunks, that we have been gifted by the FCC, we're going to lose those in their entirety. In fact, what I propose, what I think needs to happen here is that uh, we volunteer to give up some of these bands, maybe not in their entirety. Maybe we keep a little bit of 2 meter, and uh, maybe we keep a little bit of 10, and maybe we keep a little 12, and maybe we keep a little 6, and maybe we keep a little, you know, and on and on and on. When you look at CB radio, you know, initially it was a 23-channel ordeal, and it moved up to 40 channels. And yeah, during the heyday, all 40 channels would be just crazy. They'd be packed. We all know that. Ham radio, uh, there was a time when 2 meter had a lot of activity on it, and 10 meter as well. Um, but let's, can we be honest? I mean, I can roll through the dial, and, uh, and I'm coming up with nothing on 2 meter here. If I don't use my directional antenna uh, and point it at a repeater, I'm, I'm hardly going to hear a thing. And even when I point it at a repeater, it may go half a day before somebody keys up on a repeater. That's the real state of ham radio in 2020. I mean, we're, we're facing the fact that we have all these bands that we fought hard to get, uh, and no one's using them. So we can pretend that we need to have all of the two meter band or all of whatever meter band you want to play with, but the fact is we really don't. We could, we could do with 25%, in some cases, we could probably do a 10% of the bandwidth allocation we have. Now, there are certain bands we might want to hold on to a larger portion of. You know, for those of us who are playing around with slow scan, uh, TV, you know, or wide bandwidth uh, applications if we're experimenting, well, then obviously we need a larger chunk for that. But we're not going to be able to save all of the ham band. And for those of you out here who are just going to fight to the bitter end on that subject, um, you're going to lose, man. You're going to lose. Uh, that's just sad reality. There are too many things in the wireless industry right now that need that bandwidth. 5G, whether you love it or hate it or don't have an opinion of it, it's coming, it's real, and it's going to take up a lot of bandwidth. And they need, they need to move stuff around. Look at the television band right now, right? We had the switch to digital, which was all about squeezing the signals down into a smaller bandwidth so they could sell and allocate some of that to other stuff. They did that, but now look what quietly is happening right now. They're squeezing it again. We're losing almost all the VHF band. Now we're pushing more channels into the UHF, but we're going to be in that UHF uh, low band where it's like channels 13 through I think 38, I think is where they're going to smoosh everybody into now. So if it's happening in television transponders where they're having to have uh, different companies gang together and uh, and share transponders so they can have those sub-channels packed in there. If they can do it, so can we. And just because the television stations were able to sell those uh, those spots doesn't mean that uh, we're going to get the same luxury because we're doing it for free. We're doing it for fun. But anyway, I, I don't want to ramble on endlessly, but I do want to get the conversation started. I know for a lot of you folks out there, this is going to be a tough conversation to have. A lot of uh, time spent getting at, at, you know, access to different parts of the spectrum, 
and now to hear uh, that a loss is, uh, has arrived or is coming is probably going to be difficult to say the least. But if we can just formulate a uh, plan of attack, as it's called, and try to maybe focus in on saving certain segments of those bands, I think we'll do a lot better in the long run. That's it for tonight. I am Eric, the owner of Farpoint Farms. Hope you enjoyed this video. And please feel free to comment below. I'm kind of curious to see where this takes us. Uh, I know there's going to be some heated arguments, but really, honestly, if we could just work together on this one, I think it'll be for the benefit of all of us. Till next time, take care. There's always something that needs a little fixing on Bar Point Farms. Freedom is mighty sweet.